Professor Vittorio Sebastiano manages a lab in Stanford University, which developed and patented technology for partial cellular reprogramming. He co-founded TurnBio, where he is now head of research to translate this technology into clinical applications. And with that, let me start the interview. Hello, Professor Sebastian. You run a lab in the Institute of Stem Cell Biology and Regenerative Medicine at Stanford University and are the head of research at TurnBio. So welcome back to Modern Health Span. Hi, so, thank you for, for having me. You are very welcome. So we talked to you about two years ago on the work you were doing mm -hmm. in your lab at, and at TurnBio. Right? So I'm very much looking forward to catching up with, on the very exciting technology that you're working on. So I saw that you recently were appointed the head of research at TurnBio. So could you tell me a little bit about TurnBio and your role there and how it has changed? Sure. Well, TurnBio is, uh, is a startup, uh, is, a, is the company that I co-founded uh, a few years back. Um, and uh, the mission of TurnBio is really to try to, to tackle fundamentally the problem of, of aging and aging associated disorders. Uh, the foundational technology uh, at the base of uh, the basis of, of turn is uh, um, technology that we de developed, uh, invented, and developed and implemented in my lab at Stanford, and that that was subsequently uh, exclusively licensed to to turn. Uh, which is a technology that, you know, in, in very simple words, uh, allows for the rejuvenation of theoretically any human cell type uh, to a more, a more youthful, a more functional, a more functional state. Uh, so the mission of Third Bio is really to, to, to use this uh, technology that we think is going to be groundbreaking. Uh, and really start applying it to a variety of different uh, aging associated uh, indications. Um, and uh, yeah, as such, uh, TURN is, is developing a number of different research programs. Uh, and as head of research of, of TURN, I'm overseeing those, those research programs. So I'm making sure that my, my background as a scientist uh, and uh, the rigor that I typically apply to, to, you know, to, the, to the work that I do um, is, is really met. Uh, it's absolutely important that uh, we go by the really the rigorous standards of, of research and we make sure that in particular from a safety standpoint, but obviously also from an efficacy standpoint that we really check all the all the boxes. So um, in brief, uh, really, I'm overseeing the, the, the research efforts of TURN. Can you talk a little bit about more about the technology, mm -hmm. like kind of the background te technology. So you have ERA, right? The what does ERA stand for? Sorry, I forgot. ERA stands for epigenetic reprogramming of aging. Epigenetic reprogramming of aging. Thank you. So, can you talk? You know, like the theory of how ERA works. Sure. So, uh, ERA pretty much is. Uh, it, it can, it, to some extent, it can also can also be um, the, the 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 definition of ERA or the the way ERA works uh, is very similar to what people typically refer to transient reprogramming or partial reprogramming. So, what does that mean? Reprogramming means that you are basically resetting a specific program, a cellular program, into a different one. So typically, historically, people have been thinking about reprogramming in the sense of turning one cell type into a different cell type. Uh, so think about what, uh, uh, for example, Shinya Yamanaka uh, discovered a few years back. He discovered a way to turn any somatic fully differentiated cell type. So for example, a skin cell, a liver cell, a neuronal cell into an embryonic like cell. So this was a groundbreaking discovery because it allowed basically to really reset the cellular identity from a fully differentiated, fully committed cell type into an embryonic like cell, which is now capable of giving rise to any cell type in the body. There are other types of reprogramming. So for example, uh, the, the um, what is what is what is uh, referred to as horizontal reprogramming, which means 
you are skipping this embryonic like reprogramming. And what you're doing is just simply turning one cell type into another cell type. So for example, you turn a skin cell into a neuronal cell or uh, a chondrocyte into, I don't know, a muscle cell, just, just, to make, just to make an example. Our technology is also a technology of reprogramming, but what we are doing is not changing the cell identity. So the cell identity remains the same, what we are doing is that we are tweaking, we are tuning, we are re resetting the, the epigenetic landscape so that the cell identity remains the same, but it's the cellular age that is being reversed to a more youthful state. So this is what reprogram uh, era is all about. How do we do it? Well, we do it by providing the cells with a cocktail of mRNAs that if transiently expressed, and transient expression is really the key concept here, uh, if transiently expressed, these factors can basically go into the nucleus uh, and uh, reset, rewind, reprogram the epigenetic landscape of the cells so that the cell is kind of reverted back to a more functional, more youthful uh, state. <clears throat> okay, so when you're when you're reprogramming them, right? It, you have to get to a certain point until b b before it kind of uh, changes identity. So mm -hmm. how well is that point defined, like the point of no return? Yeah, well, it's it's kind of an interesting and tricky question at the same time. So this point of no return uh, is, uh, is an empirical uh, kind of state or an empirical time during the reprogramming process. Uh, beyond which you you don't want to go because again you know of course the you it's it's kind of you know going through or or yeah if you pass that state you are starting losing a cell identity so it's absolutely important that we define that point of no return and how do we define it well in in a turn and in my lab the way we define it is that is by really carefully understanding the process of reprogramming in a very in a cell specific fashion. So the point of no return for fibroblasts is very different for the point of no return for chondrocytes, or it's very different from the point of no return for blood cells or for stem cells. So it's absolutely important that we first understand when that point of no return occurs. Uh, and by knowing that, then we know the window of opportunity or the window of intervention by which we can apply the transient reprogramming, not having the cell identity loss, but having the rejuvenation effects happening. <clears throat> so a couple of other kind of general questions. So do you see e the epigenetic changes as being kind of the root of the other hallmarks of aging, right? As the, the key one that's driving all the other changes? Oh, yes, I absolutely agree with that statement. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that many colleagues actually are, are, do not agree with me. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, but I, I fundamentally believe that really the epigenetic uh, the, the, the epigenetic changes are considered to be one of the hallmarks, one of the many hallmarks of, of aging. Mm -hmm. I personally think that it's probably one of the the in the if we, if we were to kind of you know draw a kind of a, a tree or a hierarchical tree a tree of of, of uh, you know of these hallmarks, I think that the epigenetic changes are really um, at the core. Uh, and they can actually explain most, if not all, of the other of the other changes, in ways that are obviously still, uh, you know, uh, we still do not fully understand and grasp. Obviously, because the the field is actually moving very very fast, and there is there is a lot of work going on here. But I I, I personally think that fundamentally, um, um, the epigenetic changes are, are really kind of the root of all the other hallmarks, of all the other changes that you see happening with, the, with age. Uh, and as such, uh, if we can really tackle them, then we can have kind of a domino effect on pretty much all of the, all, all of the other ones that are in a way subordinate you know, to, the, to the epigenetic changes. When we talked last time, you said like the, the epigenetic, epigenetic changes could be random or programmed. I just, mm -hmm. but, but we didn't really know. It, do you, I just wondered whether your thoughts had, whether you had any other further thoughts on whether it was random or programmed. 
Well, we are still far from uh, uh, really an exhaustive uh, answer. Uh, there is a lot of uh, controversy and a lot of debates in the in the field. Um, again, I, I can tell you what I personally think. <laughs> yeah. I, I personally think it's a little bit of both in the mm -hmm. sense that I, I really truly believe that there is a program of aging, which is embedded in our in our genome. Mm -hmm. um, and the very simple reason behind that thinking is the fact that the consideration at least that um, we uh, different species have a very kind of a, a certain uh, pattern of aging, okay? Uh, and you know we we age over the course of a, a certain number of years, and then other animals you know age uh, over the course of a different uh, number of years. So that that is explained really by something that is really developmentally embedded in the in the genome somehow. What is triggering it? Still, matter of debate, of course. Uh, but at the same time, you know, on top of that. There is also an additive factor, which is damage that, for example, is, is coming you know, from the external environment, the dietary habits, uh, sun exposure, uh, pollution, uh, exercise or no exercise, stress, non-stress, uh, sleeping habits. Uh, you know, there is a lot of other factors, Cir circadian rhythms, for example. There is beautiful works, you know, that work done in, in, in this in this in this field that suggests that you know the external stimuli, whatever those are, can influence the epigenetic features of the cells, for good and for bad. And this obviously has has an impact on how accelerated the process of aging uh, is. Uh, so I think there is a little bit of both uh, playing a role here. There is an embedded program, which needs to be still understood and figured out. But on top of that, there is also an additive uh, problem, which is the damage that is coming from the, from the outside. But <clears throat> it doesn't really matter. Again, I, 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 I always say this, that it doesn't really matter um, how and the weight of either one of those. At the end of the day, both kind of uh, result in changes in the epigenetic landscape of the cells. And that's really the, the program that we need to understand and the program that we need to tune and tweak and reprogram in order for the cells to kind of delay the process of aging or even reverse the process of aging.